This is Twit. Are you excited about the Raspberry Pi 5, Father Robert? Yes. That thing actually looks amazing. That's It's got the specs to actually be a mini computer versus the crippled thing that we've had up to the Raspberry Pi. But still 40 bucks, right? Or no, 60 bucks. Still 40 bucks. Oh, all yeah. right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, 60. 60? Uh, oh, that, no, you're right. You're right. You're right. 64-bit yep. quad-core ARM Cortex-A76 running at 2.4 gigahertz. You know, a few years ago, that really would have been like, wow, that's super desktop quality. I know, right? uh, <laughs> big, that's about two to three times performance, according to the verge of the existing four-year-old Raspberry Pi 4. A 800 megahertz a video core 7 graphics chip. Uh, we'll have to try that before we know exactly what that will do. Um, a Southbridge which helps the device communicate with peripherals. The RP1 Southbridge is going to really speed up peripheral performance. Two four-lane, 1.5 gigabit MIPI transceivers. So as many as two cameras or two displays. <laughs> and, and actually, Tech, Tech Dino brings up my favorite new feature of the Raspberry 5. It has a power switch. What? I have to yep, reboot so my Pi by unplugging down. the micro USB connector. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can turn yep. it on and off. Four, you can support two 4K 60p HDMI displays. It's got a micro SD card slot, two USB 3 ports, two USB 2 ports, gigabit Ethernet, still on a 5-volt DC power connection via USB-C, not micro USB. So this, is, this sounds like the computer to get. Can you get it, I guess, is the question. I mean, there's going to be a, a supply constraint, of course, when it first comes out. But yeah, no, they, they've they've done a really good job of ramping up production. They had a problem with the Raspberry Pi 4 because so many people were doing homebrew projects when the Raspberry Pi 4 was popular. But right. this, I think, because it's a higher price point and a lot of the homebrewers are going to stay with the older versions, this will be more for the people who actually want to do some higher end computing. They've got a broad range now. From from the base yes. Raspberry Pi to the four, and they, it's really good what they what, what you can do, and you should get the one that's right for the job you need. And maybe that's not right. a Raspberry Pi, maybe that's an Arduino. I hope people will, you know, pick the right one so we can all get ours. Uh, Pre-orders now, uh, shipping late this month in late October. Yeah, uh, can I ask a question of Robert? Just since uh, I'm course. a podcast host, and I tend to do that when I ask questions. I too. insist. Does does, does this? Does does this version with Raspberry Pi 5 bring it to a broader audience? Because it's always felt like anybody that I talk to that's really into Raspberry Pi is also into, or it's like, it's it's a it's a niche audience that is really really into it. Like right, the old joke of like, how do you know if someone's into Raspberry Pi? Like they'll tell you. Like, <laughs> that's yes, yes, and no. And, and okay. what I mean is this: uh, so um, it will be a much bigger audience on the secondary market. So those people who are going to be taking these, putting them into cases and maybe bundling it so that it, it comes as a computer that you can turn on on your desk. Mm -hmm. So that's where it really widens the market. But but you're right. Most people who have been using Raspis are a bit more on the geeky side. They're a bit more on the tech side. They love building things that do odd actions with stimuli. Um, this this is probably overkill for that. So most of the projects that I've used a Raspi for, this would be way, way, way too much. Maybe I could use this for a Tor machine. Maybe I could use this as a storage server uh, um, a motherboard. Maybe I could use it for my VPN. But all of the other stuff that I've got running on Raspis here, this is way too much computer. Well, I remember you showing us on Know How to use a Raspberry Pi for a Pi hole. I would think this would be a yeah. great Pi hole machine. Yeah. Is it overkill? A, a pie hole, a, an access point, a VPN. So anything that requires a lot of complex computations, and this throughput. is great. But like, for example, yeah. this screen, it, it, all, the, all the signage around the courier runs on Raspberry Pis that I've installed. So oh, you're I have kidding. centralized control. Oh, that's no, right. So, but I, I don't need a pie, a five for that. In fact, this is running on a Raspberry 2, yeah. I think. Yeah, it could be a three or a B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, good. This is exciting. I still want to get one. I don't need it, but I still want to get one. But you know what? So many schools use them. Maybe hold back if you're not going to use them yeah, right of course. away. Yeah. Come join us on This Week in Enterprise Tech Expert Coast and I talk about the enterprise world. And we're joined by industry professionals and trailblazers like CEOs, CIOs, CTOs, CISOs, every acronym role plus IT pros and marketeers. And we talk about technology, software plus services, 
security, you name it, everything under the sun. You know what? I learn something each and every week and I bet you, you will too. So definitely join us. And of course, check out the twit.tv website and click on This Week in Enterprise Tech. Subscribe today. Subscribe today.